Are you a new developer looking to develop your first smart contract on EOS? Well, then this video is for you. I'm going to show you the easiest way to get started with developing on EOS, how you can get started in just a couple of minutes developing your first smart contract because previously you've had to install your local node, you've had to install the build tools, you have to install the command line interface. None of that is true no more. Now we have an easy to use tool that you can use in your web browser and I'm going to show you how it works and how you can develop and actually test your own first smart contract from that tool. Very exciting and I've criticized EOS for uh, making it too hard for people to get started with programming on EOS but now they are catching up and multiple online tools are popping up and I'm not affiliated with, fil affiliated with anyone, any of them I'm just picking and showing the one that I thought worked best and I'm going to show you how it works right now so this is what it looks like it's called Biosyn I think that's how you pronounce it and it is the one IDE online that I could find that actually worked for me I think the other ones has uh, some some uh, more time to develop and uh, or maybe I'm just uh, I don't know how to use them but this one worked for me and uh, directly when you go to biosyn.com you'll be greeted by this nice IDE and, and from the beginning you have an hello a hello world contract here that you can uh, start to play around with so how does this little IDE work well you have your code here you have your files here to the left you select the version that you want to use up here and this has pre-selected the uh, 1.5 version maybe that is what this contract is compatible with we can then uh, select the contract that we want to compile and uh, we can uh, put the contract name we can click start to compile it will compile our contract and we will see if we made any errors but now since this is just uh, entered here automatically hopefully there is no compilation errors then we have a run tab up here this looks very much like remix for solidity and here we can specify do we want to use the local network test network main network and for now we're going to use the local network we're going to select an account and then uh, i actually already have let's see i ha already have a contract deployed there because i tried this before let's see if i switch accounts uh, they disappear so now it looks more similar to you but you pick an account you hit deploy this will deploy it to just a local network and here we can actually just try out our function so we can actually type here we we execute the uh, the hello or hi action sorry the hi action and uh, we're going to select which account we want to use to interact we're going to select permissions uh, you should mostly have active and then we can uh, just type a name here so let's do i'm going to type my name philip i'm going to click on hi and we'll get a transaction here where we see that the console log was hello philip just like it said in the function so what does this contract do just to walk through really quickly well we define our contract up here we inherit some stuff from the contract that we imported here and then we specify our function or our action here and it's called hi it takes a username which is the type is name and the name is user and name is a specific EOS IO type it doesn't exist in C++ then all that this does is that it prints to the console that is hello followed by the username uh, converted uh, this is a sort of a conversion back to human readable form to a username and then we write this macro as it's called here I think it's called a macro ESO IO dispatch which uh, basically it tells the uh, the compiler that the uh, contract name is hello and the action available in this contract is high if we create more actions we will put them here uh, the names here we'll put them here goodbye like that and uh, we could for example uh, edit this contract and see um, the change actually happening in real time let's say we wanted to restrict the uh, access to this function by using the function require off that it restricts the execution of this function to any user that we put the username that we put in here so let's say that we want to restrict it to uh, the uh, let's say we want to restrict it to uh, let's do just the user that's the easiest let's restrict it to the user that is calling and that means that 
uh, I can't uh, call this with any other username than my own. So let's try this out. We need to, I guess we need to recompile it. So let's click compile. I don't know if it does that automatically when I deploy. I haven't used this tool for so long, but let's compile to see that it was successful and it was. Then we're going to, uh, let's see here, deploy. And we'll see what happens now when I have another account. It says that it is successful and we're gonna see if I can uh, actually, if this is actually the new contract. What we need to do is that we need to copy our con or our username, which we can do up here. Copy that. We're gonna paste that here. Then we're gonna click high. Let's see. Oh yeah, look at that. It actually said missing require authority. And that is because down here I chose the account that is this long string and then one. And then up here I, I copied that was number two. So I actually, since this is the account I'm using to calling it, I need to have the same account name, of course. So that is with the one at the end. Let's try that. And there we go. So without me even knowing it, I showed the functionality that we just coded because I copied the wrong account. So this means that if I enter Philip here, I can't call that function because I don't have the authority of the Philip account because I have no account that's called Philip here. I only have these accounts here. So if I, uh, if I pick number two here and I pick the permission active and then I copy that username, that is now the right username. Now I can all of a sudden use this second account as well, because that is where I am calling from. So I can't call from one account and send another username. And uh, that is one of the, you know, basic hello world smart contracts on EOS. So this is really for all of you that are new to EOS development and wants to start to play around. And uh, if you're interested in actually stepping up your game and learning everything there is about EOS development, you can join our academy below. We have EOS courses uh, where we go through more complex EOS contracts and that, where you will learn how to program real smart contracts on EOS, how to deploy them and so on. So I hope that you learned something today that you actually found maybe a new IDE that you can use. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. Otherwise, you can hit the dislike button. Make sure also to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button, and maybe leave a comment below with your feedback. I would love to hear from you. I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.